writing my book, The Golden Shore, California's Love Affair with the Sea, I've come to understand how the Pacific Ocean defines California, also how it inspires the state's innovative entrepreneurial and environmental spirit, and how California, the world's eighth largest economy, can provide a model for how to live well by the sea. Over the course of two years researching this book, I got to take a wild and salty ride of discovery along 1,100 miles of California's Golden Shore, meeting unique watermen and women, and learning why the most populous state in the nation also has some of the most spectacular coastline and marine wildlife. Woo! I give about a seven on that, John. Californians understand that the coast and the ocean belongs to all of us, and because of its wide range of users, California's ocean can never be dominated by a single industry or special interest, but rather is protected by a democracy of interests. The neighboring ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, for example, are America's two largest. Anything you buy that says made in China, odds are 50-50 they came over these docks. Yet the head of the port of Los Angeles is a woman of vision who in the last few years has helped reduce air pollution in the ports by 70% while also expanding their operations. California expanded with the gold rush in World War II and the US Navy was there for both. While working on this book, I got to visit the Macon Island, an amphibious warfare ship training off San Diego in a 120,000 square mile military range complex. While preparing for war, the Navy has also committed to reducing its dependence on fossil fuels. In the future, its young California-based sailors and marines may have less cause to fight in the oil fields of the Middle East. California is also a world leader in marine science. The California Current has been called the Serengeti of the sea. Its deep waters include a submarine canyon larger than the Grand Canyon. Using remote sensing robots and other tools, California scientists are discovering new life while learning about the impacts of climate change, fishing, and pollution. Good policy at both the state and national level have helped restore California's once decimated shoreline and marine wildlife. One example is the Farallon Islands, the rugged offshore home to sea lions, seabirds, and white sharks. Located just 27 miles outside the Golden Gate Bridge, it has been called California's Galapagos. While 25 million people live in coastal counties south of the Golden Gate Bridge, less than 1 million live on the coast between San Francisco and Oregon. In the 1970s, Californians voted to create a coastal commission to limit development along their coast while guaranteeing public access to the beach. While on a per capita basis, California's 37 million people can claim less than two inches of waterfront each. They've worked together to make sure that translates into some of the most spectacular coastlines in the world. Read my book, The Golden Shore, California's Love Affair with the Sea, to better understand how one state is helping turn the tide for our blue marble planet.